Hey everybody, how we doing today? So, day one of our Windy Day fishing. Took a look at Windfinder. Showing that basically high teens, low 20s with Gus. Um, showing sunny, so I think we'll be okay there. Um, the things that I use are Windfinder for just my quick glance and I know wind direction, wind speed, and that's 90% of it. If it's showing stormy conditions, then I also go to uh, Weather Underground. And then um, I choose my area, then I choose the hourly forecast, and that'll give a breakdown of how much water, rain that they're expecting, any lightning and so forth. And I get, that gives me a little bit more detail about stormy conditions. But otherwise, I know it's coming out of the east, 20 knots, so we can go from there. Today is going to be a little bit different than normal, just because I had so many issues with the kayak and the motor. I want to do a bit of testing before I really get into the fishing. Um, one key safety thing that you want to think about is on windy day conditions like this, you want to start your day out going into the wind, okay? For the key reason, if you run into any type of problems that engine brakes, kayak brakes, rudder brakes, whatnot, okay, getting back to the dock just involves doing nothing because the wind will blow you back versus your downwind, okay, especially here in the Keys, Key West, your safety zone to the north is Texas, to the west is Mexico, and to the south is Cuba, okay? And only a lot of water in between, okay? So you don't wanna get downwind and not be able to get back. Very bad situation. So otherwise, uh, that is our start of the day, and we'll head out. I'm gonna go to uh, Geiger Creek to start out, and I'll kinda walk you through there. All right, we're out here in the 20 knot winds, but I found a nice little sheltered code for this introduction video. Um, one of the key things that I kind of skipped over, but you can go back to my uh, How to Fish the Florida Keys videos is a couple about using the uh, internet to help you prepare for days like this. Uh, stuff like the uh, Weather Underground and uh, Wind Finder, of course, but also like uh, Google Earth or uh, the Navionics web app, okay? Those will all help you find these kind of hidden spots and then they'll allow you to pre-search those, get about a dozen of them, of them mapped out based on if the wind's coming from this direction, this spot will be an okay spot to check out and so forth and have those ready to go. Because a lot of what we'll do today is we'll check out a spot. If it's a good spot to try, we'll try it. No fish, and then we move on to the next spot and so forth. Uh, the second part of it is to kind of adjust your priorities. Today's not such a great fish day, so don't put all your emphasis in just trying to catch fish. Spend some time uh, learning, okay? Learning routes, okay? Tomorrow I'm gonna be going out to the backcountry. Maybe you could spend part of the day trying to map that out so you can figure it out so the day that you can go fishing, you're not wasting a lot of time. Uh, check out your spots that you're wanting to fish in good weather days and just kind of see the layout. Maybe it is good, maybe it isn't as good as you thought. Okay, or three, very important for me is check out the bait spots. Okay, try to figure out where the bait are gonna be. So again, on those good fishing days, you're not wasting a lot of time trying to find bait spots. You already have them laid out and say, I think this will be a good spot. So you just head there and you're ready to go because you've already done the recon on it. So that's a lot of what today will be about is utilizing that time. Yeah, we're gonna to try to fish and bend a rod, but we're also going to invest that time, get on the water, it's sunny, it's 85 degrees, water's warm, okay? It's just got wind on it, so it's not like we're in freezing cold temps and you gotta hide indoors. It's still beautiful out here. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, take a look around. I, I'm, this fired up okay, rudder seems to be working, but I wanna, just to make sure, test them out a little bit more. So let's get going. Now, if you're on a kayak, it's a good idea to take some time to just root your path how you're going to get to those fishing spots you really don't want to be caught out in the open because it'll take forever so like i'm doing is i'm going from island to island and just running along their edges so that uh i get minimal amount of winds and i can make progress yeah it's never good when you got kind of white cappy in one foot of water on the flats Okay, I got to my hiding spot, my favorite little area here in uh, Shark Channel. So the wind's still ripping, but because I've got 
tucked in uh, next to this mangrove island here. You can see on the tips there that it's blowing up there, but mangroves are pretty thick, so it knocks it down where I'm at lower. But uh, I basically have from that corner of the mangroves, and then it gets pretty blowy out there, to that corner of the mangroves, and then it gets kind of blowy out there. And then although it looks pretty flat over here, as you start getting away from this area, you get uh, affected by the wind a lot more. Uh, but what I want to do is just take some time and go over kind of the, the gear that I bring. Uh, and plus the number one most important windy day uh, fishing piece of equipment here. So let's check that out. Now I'm rigging basically just like my normal fun day of fishing where I'm just looking to bend a rod. But I'm bringing my light tackle stuff. So I've got the two Eskies, the medium and the medium heavy. Uh, if you're a big game person, it's just not really going to happen on days like this. Uh, maybe sharks, uh, you might be able to bring it out, but most of the stuff we're looking at, mangrove snappers, uh, Jack Cavells, grunts, um, kudas, sharks, like I said, and then uh, you can get into some tarp and snook like that, but like middle of the day like this, windy day, crapping conditions, it's going to be very rare. However, this is the area that they live in. I catch them over here, but timing is a little difficult, but you never know. But since we're scaling down and we're just wanting to bend a rod, uh, lighter rod, smaller fish is just as much fun. Now the most important, important, important thing to bring is, boom, chum bring chum okay because as you saw i have the limited space i've got from there to there and this area right in this spot here that's my fishing zone okay and as i look around i have not seen a fish yet okay but that's what the chum does it brings those fish to you they won't resist food that's the one thing that they've all got in common is that none of them are going to resist food and you put that chum bag out and that will suck everything out of these mangroves off of that channel and start bringing them up so at least you get a shot at them otherwise you're just limiting yourself to a, such a small area and you're limiting yourself in the ability to catch stuff that just isn't there so chum 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 most important thing chum now another couple of uh, key important items to bring is an anchoring system. I got my stakeout pole, I've got my regular anchor, okay? Because it's that same deal, we don't have the whole Florida Keys to float around and chase stuff. We get these pocket areas and we're gonna take our time and work those areas because it's, there's not a lot of spots to go. So having an anchor allows you to kind of post up, take your time, put the chum bag out, work it, put some quality time in, and then give chance to build. And then if it happens, you're good. If it doesn't, okay, then you can move on. But if you're blowing all over the place, you're not able to control it, it's not fun, you're not very efficient, and it's just kind of a waste of time. So some sort of anchoring system will help a lot. Now let's talk bait. Um, right now we're gonna be looking for some scented stuff because the water's a little bit milky. Um, Taking the chance of not bringing any bait and any frozen cut bait was, would be uh, probably a bad decision unless you really know your stuff because limiting yourself to certain areas that you can fish also limits your ability to catch bait. Uh, I found this little area that's got some glass minnows in there so I might throw on those so I have something. But normally if I was really uh, out for getting involved I would be bringing some squid, some frozen shrimp, uh, cleaning out the freezer just so I have some sort of cut bait because uh, relying on the cast net in these conditions is uh, would be kind of risky. But I'm seeing I think a mullet there as well and I've got all like I said these glass minnows here so I do have uh, enough bait in this little vicinity because uh, they tend to like to find the uh, calmer spots as well so I'll be picking up uh, hopefully some of these because I didn't bring any uh, frozen bait. I found this mass honey hole of bait right here. As long as I don't hit that tree. I think it's all glass minnows, but I could use them. All right, try not to get the tree. Don't get the tree. What kind of bait are you? Wow. 
we got lots. Little pilchies and big pilchies. I'll keep some of the biggies and let the little ones go. Holy moly. Okay, I might as well check out this area where I caught all that bait. I know there's some mangrove snappers around. Uh, I'm gonna throw the little pilchard on my yellowtail snapper jig. Give it a little bit of weight and just put it out there and see what happens. Oh, that was quick. Oh, get it out of there. Holy crap. That was. Oh, that's a nice one. Holy mackerel. Look at that, Bubba. Man. Oh, oh, jumper. Oh, hung up on my kayak. Nice one. Oh, look at that. Bam! What did I picture book story there? Look at that dude. Beauty. Beauty. On the yellow snap, yellow tail snack for jig. Bam. Definitely got to measure that guy out. First cast. Look at that beauty on the yellowtail snapper jig with a pilchard. Woo! In this skinny old water here. Let's measure him out. Measure him out. Right out there. 15 and a half. Nice. Solid hooks. Solid fish. Perfect windy day fish. Nice. There we go. There we go. Get him out of there. Schnappers. Schnappers, schnappers everywhere. They're all down there. Ooh, big bruiser there. All right, something's taking it. Ah, oh, it spit it. No. Ah. Uh, there we got him. And on the bottom, what is that? Ah, shark. Stupid sharks. Little bonnet head. Oh man. But we're just out here bending a rod and the rod is bending, so. <laughs> Time to be done here. Ah, oh, broke it off. Oh well. All right, we got something. Oh, hey, there we go. Come over here, buddy. I pulled you out. Another nice snapper. Miracle I got him out. How about that for a windy day fish? <laughs> Look at the colors on that. Beautiful. Man, these things grow up to be massive. Let's get him back in the water. 16. Nice. One last look at him. Beautiful. <laughs> Excellent. Hey. 
Man, we're just getting the smorgasbords here. Nice grouper. Little guy, but another species. What you doing around here? Grow up. All right, something's taking this. I think I'm gonna go chase it around. Stalemate between the tide, the wind, the drag, the pull. There it's coming up. There we go. There we go. Ugh. Stay up. Stay up. You were coming up. You were doing so good. Oh no. Oh, there he is. There he is. Man, do I have him tail hooked again? I do! He's tail hooked! <laughs> man, I am the man with the shark lassoing fish. I couldn't figure out why the, the uh, line kept on just like doing circles. I thought it was just weird that it was just hitting his body, but I'm tail hooked him. Oh man, I just know how to make things so much harder. <laughs> Alright, there he's coming up. There. He's coming up. Uh, 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 look at that power of that rod. That's a big ass shark too. And dragging him backwards. Yeah. Come out doggy, let's go for a walk. I got him right on the tip of the tail. That is just awesome. Do this one more time. Uh oh, that doesn't look good. All right, either we get them or we don't here. Dang it. I'm gonna lose my damn camera because it's efficient line. All right. Oh, whoa! He just wanted to say goodbye and thank you. Oh. No cuts, no bruises, all my fingers. All right, I think I'm calling it. That was a good day of fishing. Uh, yeah, a lot of action, so very happy. I mean, found bait, that's big plus. Found a bunch of varieties of uh, fish along the mangroves. Got my big shark. Even lassoed him in by the tail. However, I broke something else. My hatch is broken. So that sucks. And that flexes now, so I can't stand on it. So that's crap. Man, it's like my warranty must have just expired or something. And everything's breaking. So I gotta order that piece in. But still, we'll carry on tomorrow's tomorrow's 20s again. Um, we'll figure out something to do. I'll bring the uh, Wilderness Systems Tarpon 140 out and do something else. But uh, yeah. Just gotta remember, there's options. You just gotta pre-plan, okay? Google Earth, find these spots where there's current um, cuts, mangroves, okay? Structure, basically. Chum, okay? I didn't use my frozen block chum, but I did have uh, cast netted those pilchards that I was able to use for chum as well. Live bait matters, but if you don't, frozen bait will work because you can't always guarantee you're gonna find those uh, uh, pilchards like that. And then, uh, yeah, just take your time and uh, really work an area more so than usual because there's just not that many areas around that you can hit. So anyways, thanks for watching and uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Bye.